Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and in this video, I want to give a very quick overview of the investment world. So basically, it all comes down to the public, and the public are people like you and me, your neighbors, you know, the postman, all of us. And essentially, we have two big demands. We have a demand for savings, we want a savings uh, products, and we want some sort of risk protection. So savings would be, you know, setting aside some money today in order for a future expense, whether it be your child's education, buying a new car, buying a house, something like that. Even going on holiday, these are all various cases of savings. Risk protection is anything from insuring your car to insuring your life in case you die and someone having to take care of your kids, all those type of things. So the public has got these two, two needs, risk protection, and savings and they found that by combining together they can create certain products and when they combine to, together and someone creates a product an institution is formed so I want to come look at the six institutions that get formed when people group together basically and you can see the red ones cover risk protection the blue ones cover savings and the purple ones have a little bit of a savings component and a little bit of a risk protection. Now, there are six types of institutional investments, oh, six types of yeah, institutional investors, just like there are six fellowships that you can do your actuarial science in. You can be an actuary in general insurance, you can be an actuary in medical aid schemes, you can be an actuary in life insurance, you can be an actuary in pensions, you can be an actuary in finance, and you can even now be an actuary in banking. Well, this is only in South Africa, but it is going to become available um, throughout the world in later times. But what happens is the public will go to someone like a financial advisor who will then point them in the right direction for which institution they should give their money to. Like I said, general insurer, you give them money. If you crash your car, they give you money back. Medical aid scheme, you give them money. You get sick, they give you money back. Life insurer, you give them money. You die and they give you money back. Pension fund, you give them money. And then when you get old, they give you money back. And I think your banks and collective investments kind of speak for themselves. But then what happens is that investment consultants, and this is where actuaries can play quite a big role, they will come to these institutional investors and help them explain where they should put their money. Essentially what they will do is they'll give their money to certain funds and funds are run by asset managers. Now asset managers are people who have like a CFA or a degree in finance or something like that. And the most common funds are hedge funds, quant funds. Quant funds is where it's a, it's a fund that's based on statistical formulas to try and extract anomalies and you know, get a little bit extra alpha. Then there's balance funds, specialist funds, funds of funds, index funds. And then these asset managers go to the actual market. So they'll go to the bond market, they'll go to the equity markets, uh, property market and so forth. Now, and that's where they'll deal with, with brokers. In this video, I'm not going to talk too much about the, the documents, but if you study actuarial science, you will go into a lot of detail into what these documents actually are. But if we zoom out, and you can see, it's, this is very, I mean, there still is the regulator who I haven't spoken about, and he comes and, you know, makes everything complicated and weird. His main goal is to protect the public from the asset managers, but we'll talk about that in another video. Interesting things to point out is your general insurers and your banks, because they're quite short term, they're going to be putting a lot of their money directly into the money market. Whereas your other funds who help other institutional investors who have more of a longer term um, li liabilities, they're going to invest in more longer term assets such as bonds, equities, properties. Um, and I think yeah, that basically is how, how investments work, is you have the public, they speak to their financial advisor, they give their money to an institutional investor who gives them a product or a promise, that then creates a liability, they then contact an asset manager to invest that money in such a way that best matches the assets to their liabilities. But now look, as the public, you can go, I mean the public can be like, screw that, I'm going to go straight here and invest with the asset managers, or you can actually go and invest in you know, bond markets and equity yourself. But it is by going through an institution that you're getting the benefit of people joining together. Specifically when it comes to risk management, when people join together, uncertainty does decrease. And by joining together with certain investments, 
they can access bigger funds. Because remember, a big pension fund can get a much lower fee from an asset manager when they come with, say, a billion dollars than you as an individual who comes with, you know, your little one million dollars. So there is those advantages. But essentially, I want this video to be very quick, very short. I wanted to give you guys just a very quick overview of how the investment uh, market works. And there we go. There it is in a picture. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Cheers.